What's really nice in the gel block, uh, a lot of it's going to be temporary. Temporary. You're ultimately what whatever is directly in front of the bullet path that the bullet crushes is what you're doing damage to. So although the wound cavity may look you know three four inches in in uh, in overall diameter, really it's it's whatever's directly in front of the the projectile itself. So. Um, you want the bullet to get as wide as possible, to do as much damage as possible, while not sacrificing too much on penetration, so that ultimately we're trying to get the bottom. So pistol ammo is just a spear. Yeah. yeah. And yep. when we talk about rifle, you move from what is a bullet hole situation to a kinetic energy type of explosive wound. That's the real big difference between the two. Yep, and you'll you'll see that here. And what we'll also look at is the comparison and penetration between rifle and pistol rounds. Um, a lot of folks still have the mentality that rifle rounds are over, over penetrators. What we'll see today is that most of the, well, a couple of the rifle rounds we'll shoot today are gonna penetrate significantly less than the handgun rounds that you guys are using. So uh, that'll be a, a good test. And uh, we'll go ahead and start shooting the handgun portion of this, unless you guys have any questions. These shots. So without further ado, this here is my 17, this here is my 22, and that is my 45. Okay, lock 17, we'll start with a side-in shot. This is a 147 grain, 9 millimeter, bonded, jacketed hollow point, Ranger product. And second shot. My weapon is safe and clear. Line is cold, we can go forward. Our, our uh, net velocity is 991. 991. Oh, yep, I got it. All right, let's go forward. Check this out. Sorry, Todd. All right, 991. 991, good velocity. Catalog velocity is 990, so it's right on point. And it looks like we got some good penetration here. As you can see, you got the wound cavity here, the bullet stabilizing in the gel, and took a turn downward. Looks like we're right at about 16 and a quarter. What we do is we measure uh, to the nearest quarter of an inch. So if we're over 16, bump it up to 16 and a quarter. Good upset, obviously used all of its hollow point cavity. Uh, pissed, you know, Traditional pistol ammunition, you know, wounds by hydraulics. It's not, it's not mechanical, it's hydraulic pressure. And the challenge with any hollow point is can it remove that precursor material, clear itself out and still function hydraulically, giving you that upset. You know, the upset does two things, as Sean said, make, you know, uh, makes the wound bigger, bigger hole, more trauma, but it also puts on the brakes and gives you that, that liability control on the backside. That's what we're looking for. We're looking for adequate penetration in that general region, you obviously got that, but we've also controlled our liability on the backside. You exactly, know, then, and that's the move away from, you know, FMJ to, to hollow points, right. is, to, is to control liability. You don't want to be zipping around through people, uh, especially in an urban environment like Atlanta. So um, good upset, good depth of penetration. Um, that's exactly what you want in a, uh, in a, in a jacketed hollow point. And this is a bonded round. Uh, we'll go over once we shoot the T series versus the bonded in the 40 and 45. It'll be more uh, prevalent, so we'll go over that once uh, we get into the bigger calibers here. And which round was that again? This was RA9B. 147 bonded. 147 grain bonded. Thank you. Eyes and ears. Eyes and ears. Here we go. And we are firing. Weapon is safe and clear. Line is cold. We can go forward. 1037. 1037. And that was Hornady Critical Duty. Nine millimeter. Nine millimeter. All right. We actually breached the top. Uh, in all fairness, probably a good idea to shoot that one over. Yeah. Okay. So we're you know in all. So there's your here's your critical duty tip right there but because we went out of the top we're going to shoot that one over do an alibi shot yep we'll give them a fair shake it yep. probably turned a little bit yep. so no big deal that's what happens when you try to conserve space on, on the gel block so i'm going to need another nine millimeter horse to keep around to get through the, all the test we'll go right below it i was a little high on the point
Okay. Thank you, sir. Oops. All right, that'll work. You want to take one that hadn't been dropped? Yeah, sure. What the heck? Just, just for uh, just to keep sake. it, yeah. just to keep it legit. Yeah. All, right. All right, here we go. Going to go right up. below it. Yeah. It's that oh, smoking hot horn hornery okay. that made me raise my muzzle up. You know? I got you. All right, line's going to go hot again. One more shot right below it. Hornady. Here we go. Line is hot and firing. <laughs> Better. My weapon's safe. Line is cold. 10, 20. There we go. That's what we're looking for. So here we go. You know, similar wound cavities. Again, you know, a lot of this stuff with the handgun rounds is going to be temporary cavitation. Really, the damage that you're doing with the handgun round, like George said, you're poking a hole in somebody. You want it to go significantly deep enough to do some damage to vitals, and you want it to get as wide as possible. So, um, what do we got here? About 14 three quarter, I guess. 14 three quarter. Now the the interesting thing about the Hornady is, and everybody's seen with it, it does have that um, the polycarbonate tip or the plastic tip to it, and it, and it to the best I can tell in my experience, it does change that uh, it's a, it's dynamic. Oh, up oh, yeah, that dynamic from a, from what is a. Um, Hydraulic upset to a mechanical upset because now you, you know, it's not just water pressure it, You've got something in there that's driving the hollow point but I, I do think it does you know once that kind of squashes out a little bit It's almost like it initiates it mechanically, but then it does turn hydraulic, but there is a mechanical function to it um, As you can see how it gets pressed right outward the problem is is you know This is one one more thing that can go wrong, right? It's it's we all work in the manufacturing world. Anytime you complicate something, mm -hmm. it, it, it's another uh, component that you have to manufacture to a spec. So I think it, uh, their claim to fame is that it does open up quite consistently. They, you know, no matter what you shoot, it does always give you an upset. But it is a, it is a, it's a pretty a thin upset. It's not a big wide upset. It, it doesn't really squash down like a traditional jacketed hollow point. But you know, decent performance there. Got good penetration. A, no, no arguments there. Yep, good penetration. It expanded. Um, what you'll see typically between ours is the, ours gets a little bit wider than theirs, but um, but they make okay. a good product, and and um, that is what you want through heavy cloth. You know, didn't get a 180 grain RA40B bonded, bonded one. You said 180 grain. This is 180 bonded. 180 bonded. RA. Two shots. Two shots. John, you our line will go hot. Eyes and ears, please. Sight in shot, 40 bun. And here we go. God, I jerked that one. Our weapon safe and cold. 992 on the velocity. 992 down. velocity. Again, velocity is right on point. Beautiful upset on that, guys. Nice, big, okay. wide. Gets big, gets fat. This is a RA 40B, Ranger bonded, 40. 180 grain. And it, yeah, I mean that's a that's a good shot right there. That's that's a perfect upset. That's what you want. Um, really, really good performance. Nice wound cavity. And uh, nothing, nothing left of that hollow point. It used all of its energy and just completely flattened out. Gets you nice big, big, wide hole, but controls your liability. <clears throat> Got about 13, 12 and three quarters, we'll call that's, it. That's that's magic number right there, guys. That's that's beautiful. You get, you know, so, if you think about it, you know, why why do we get all hung up on this 12 to 18 inches of penetration FBI thing? Well, it's because that bank robbery in 1986. All anybody ever thought about was hitting people like this. Well, that whole situation was all about cross-body terminal effectiveness. And that's where they came up with this 12 day team. So, you got this, we know we're good there. And and understand that you know, ballistic gelatin does not translate into an inch per inch, you know, to human type of thing. You know, all human beings are different. You know, a ballistician will even tell you that two, skin alone is worth two inches in ballistic gelatin human skin um, but what it's saying is you know if we can get that adequate penetration in most human engagements most human encounters whether it's a 
100 pound soaking wet crack or, or a 300 pound guy in a denim jacket coming out of the DOC, you're going to have a successful engagement. You know, you're going to get that kind of thing. Um, so again, we, we want to get this adequately, but we also want to be able to get across and get terminal effectiveness, effectiveness here. But that is that is textbook where you want to do it. Absolutely. My badge. So. Here we go. T series, 180 grain. Line is hot. That jerks that one too. Anyway, weapon is safe. Front side, safe. Front side. Nine, nine. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm down and left, sir. Let me guess. You're right handed. So. Yeah. Here. yeah. Here we go, guys. I mean, this is the difference between bonding and T series. You know, uh, if you look at this projectile right here, I mean, look at that upset. You know, the big, big wound. Big wound cavity. Yeah, that's a big wound cavity. And massive expansion. You know, because you've got this massive expansion, it's not going to go as deep as some of these other rounds. However, the wounding that you receive, that you obtain from that type of expansion is unmatched. I mean, it, I, I haven't seen anything on the market that's been able to match that type of uh, expansion performance. So, right about 11. And what's, what's unique about the T-Series product compared to not only just other Winchester products, but um, a lot of the products on the market. Number one, look at what it's pulling off of there. You haven't seen that yet. Look at all the material that's on there. And again, that's just absolute uh, trauma and, and, and uh, just, it's just tearing up flesh as it's going through. Obviously, it's a derivative of our old Talon bullet when you get right down to it. And the thing to remember with that is at some point in time, it's blooming out. Uh, you know, wider than that as it folds back. But the real unique thing is, you know, most hollow, most jackets on hollow point bullets do two things. Obviously, they they aid in the internal function of the firearm. It's better than just shooting lead. It spits out, it, you know, the rifling really nicely and spins up very well. But the jacket basically also controls the upset of the lead. But in most rounds, it's the lead that's causing that crush trauma. The T-Series is unique in the fact that it's the, the only jacket on the market where really the jacket becomes part of the trauma causing process. It not only gives you crush trauma, but it gives you cut trauma. So it's both cr uh, crush, uh, crush and cut trauma, and it's very, very unique to that. It doesn't just control the upset of the lead, it's part of that trauma causing process. Works beautifully. That's what you want to do, and, and, and envision that thing spinning out like that inside. It's, it's pretty significant. Yep, so that's that's exactly what you want out of that round. You know, did we get to the full 12 inches? No, we got to 11. However, happy customer. I don't think that anybody, uh, you know, in the right mind would call that a failure. And no. that's exactly what we want. So, um, again, you know, 10, 11 inches, we're still in the sweet spot, um, and it's doing some damage. Absolutely. Hold it out. Can I have the right magazine? Thank God. 40 caliber mag I, I get the Ammo. hang of it. Alright, so the line, the line will go hot again. 180 grain. Lock 22, mag tech. And line is hot. With the eyes and ears. Nice shot. You know what it was? I didn't have both elbows down. And my weapon is safe and clear. Safe. 968, 968. Is that a 180? Yes. Looks like it got a good upset. Looks like it got pretty decent penetration. Good wound cavity, good good penetration. Dead on right at 11, just like the last and one. Just so I'm clear, when you guys say upset, are you talking about the actual turning of the bullet to where it's well, not the, uh, the upset is actually not necessarily the turning, but the blooming or, or the, okay, yeah, okay, the blooming okay. at the expansion. Okay, the expansion. expansion and, okay, yeah. I just want to make sure the... operation here guys yeah. that's right eh. <laughs> good upset very good upset you see it had you know looks like a bonded bond round right just by the bond. yeah definitely a, a, some type of bonded product the fact that the, the jacket is you know attached to the lead but again you can see that the real difference you know when this particular that talent board is a very unique product uh, in that it, you know it gives you that added that added talent or cutting benefit to it but nice performance good job Good job. You won't hear us badmouth somebody else's stuff. I think we have, you know, one thing that's great about this business, you know, there's there's a few players that are doing significant products for law enforcement customers. And the fact that we're all competing 
is a good thing for Hillis. It makes us do our jobs better, makes us more creative, makes us make a better product. So um, we, have, we have very strong competitors out there. Now, when somebody else's stuff messes up, I'm going to tell you about it. <laughs> 40 down here. Big 45, I'm definitely going to take in. I got to all right, man. Uh, I'll, I'll swing by. Okay. You, have, you have time tomorrow? All right, great. I'll give you a shot. Good to see you. Right. See you guys. Good to see you. So I'm going to take a side in shot because I'm so scared of 45 and I got tiny yep. little girl hands. And this big Glock 21 is too much for me. All right, side in <laughs> shot, then we'll take the, full, the block shot. Here we go. Line will go hot. Big old 2 by 4 Glock 21. Ugh. All right, here we go. Side in shot. Line is hot. We are firing. He's scared. Here we go. <laughs> Side in. Here we go. Block shot. Don't jerk the trigger. I'll take it. The weapon is clear and safe. Line is cold. Six eight six. Oops, I'm sorry. You good? You good? Eight six eight. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm dyslexic today. There we go. <laughs> Looks like we got right about twelve inches. I'm guessing eleven, ten, three and quarter. Yeah. But bigger, bigger. You know. Bigger starting diameter, bigger upset. You know, it's going to put on the brakes more too. Yeah, that's true. Uh, from the leading edge, we got just over 12, so about 12 and a quarter. Okay, we'll take that. And uh, you know, this is another one of our T series products. Now, as you can see, anytime we're pulling T series out of gel, it's going to pull that gel out and and really do some damage here. Yeah, we've that's got. What you want. That's exactly that is what you want, right picture here. Picture perfect, right there, guys. You know, very good concentric upset. I mean, and that was a non-bonded or bonded. That is. That a, was a non-bonded. Non-bonded non talon bullet. You yeah. know, I mean, you can regular. You velocity. can hold it if you want it. I mean, that'll that'll cut your fingers. I mean, that's what we designed it to do. Uh, the talons, like George said, it. We talked about poking holes in people with pistol rounds. You know, you're not getting that high energy, kinetic, explosive type of trauma. So what do you need to do to make that round more terminally effective? Add cutting trauma to that crushing trauma. And that's exactly what the T-Series does. Next, we're gonna shoot our bonded round. It's gonna look a real, real similar to that, but you'll be able to tell there's a bonding process that, that I'm good, thank you. pulls that lead and that jacket together so you're not going to get as dramatic of uh, you know, those points sticking out on it. That's, that's the difference. But it, a lot of times, you may get another half inch, inch of penetration. Um, we'll see how it goes on the, on the next shot, though. You're giving up a little because uh, some agencies really wanted that 45, higher velocity, close 45, speed, right? because uh, it wanted to kick, out, kick up the velocity out of the, uh, the Guns that are smaller than a full five-inch, you know, uh, 1911. So these uh, service pistols, this is probably, I believe, the 21 is four and a half-inch barrel, uh, somewhere thereabouts. Uh, you've got a 30, I believe. You know, if you're worried about velocity and you want to kick up the velocity a little bit, the plus P may be a way to go. What's the weight of the bullet on this? 230. 230. 230. Okay. Both yep. of them are 230. Uh, all of our primary duty rounds are all in the 230 grain. Okay. Um, it's a tried and true bullet weight, works really well, as well. Bullet mass is awful important to us, but you know, whether we're talking bonded or non-bonded, when we start talking about heavy barriers, bullet mass is really key, yeah, whether it's bonded or not. Okay, line will go hot, 45 plus P. Weapon is safe and cold, we can go forward 960. So significant more velocity. 960. Yep. And really, really big old upset on this side, guys. Yeah, here we go. You know, and and with that increase in velocity, what you're doing is, uh, George talked about hydraulics. You know, uh, with the increase in velocity, you're speeding up that round. It's filling with fluid quicker, and it's going to make it open up more dramatically. So uh, the plus P's typically will open up a little bit more because it activates the hollow point, gets it wider which causes breaking, which causes, you know, the bullet to stop. So uh, this one definitely did its job and did what it, it's designed to do at a faster, faster speed. Leading edge there, got about 11 inches. 
11 inches so you know we're, we're right there very very good depth of penetration right in the sweet spot and the expansion so you can take note of what's being pulled out. yeah i mean there's the expansion on this one i i would i would gather that this is close to an inch in yeah, diameter that's, that's possibly huge. more i mean you're not going to find a, a, a product on the market that does this consistently um, in these type of tests as the 45 T series. That's a that's a big big expansion there. Absolutely. Hmm. You know, it's um, very very successful round. Has a uh, cult following in law enforcement. Any of the rounds that you see from us today, we do not sell to the public. So it's law enforcement only. And, um, and that round again was the. This is a 45 T Series plus P. Okay, thank you. RA45 TP is the code. RA45 TP. Yep, Ranger 45 TP. So that's that's that round. And next we'll shoot our uh, 45 bonded, which will perform similarly, but will likely get a little bit more depth of penetration, and um, uh, at you know the expense of a little bit of expansion, but still very well within uh, the FBI protocol, all, all, all of these rounds that you're going to see today from us. And then also that SXT die cut that really helps in, in that hydraulic uh, function. So. Ranger bonded okay. 45. Okay, Ranger bonded 230 grain. Here we go. Want to go hot again? Eyes and ears, please. And we are firing Ranger bonded. Ah, that jerked that one up. That's 21, we're good. Mine is cold. 923. You're, you know, uh, plus P's at 960. This one's at 923. So we're right there. And as you can see, we got a, a uh, deeper penetration. Deeper depth of penetration, like we were saying, you know. It's just when you bond it, you restrict it. So it's not going to flow and put on those brakes uh, like that T series product does and stick all those just arms. Just 12 out. and 3 quarter, we'll call it 13. A little bit deeper penetration. A little bit deeper penetration. Um, But as you can see, you know, you can see that those those talons like you saw in the previous, the, the barbs, they want to pop out, but they're they're chemically bonded. The lead the lead is chemically bonded to that jacket. So although they want to pop out and do more damage, uh, the way that bonding works is it, it doesn't allow for that. But what it does allow for is de is greater depth of penetration. So um, really depending on the agency's thought process, you know, we we make both types because there's two different you know schools of thought deeper penetration uh control expansion and uh more consistent performance through barriers um and then there's the school of thought more trauma more wounding get as big as possible and, and we'll sacrifice a half inch or an inch to, to gain that type of uh, uh uh, extra wounding from the I think what you generally see is people bouncing up to the bonded when you know the automobile barriers are, are significant to them. you know that you know how they've engaged people you know the highway patrol guys are always doing car stops and not to say that you know, county mounties or, or, or local police you know so municipal, municipal police don't stop cars obviously um, but you know I, I think what you'll find in, with, with everything we shoot today is that there's not there's not one bullet that's going to fail in any of these they're just going to do some things better than the others. You know, it's like it's like you, you got a you got a car race and you got a choice between a Porsche, a minivan, or a truck. Well, depending on the conditions of that race, one might be better than the other. They're all going to get you there eventually, but one might be more optimal depending on the conditions. And and there's no one magic bullet out there. So I'll take the Porsche. Critical duty 45. Got that one. Right, Nine five one. Nine five one. Nine fifty one. That's got good penetration there. Yep, yep. good penetration. It's the Hornady. That's the Hornady. Uh, the horn. I think it's a two twenty. It's a wild. Yep. Yeah. It's not a wild cat, but you know what Oops. I'm saying. It's a in between. Yeah, I think the the reason that the grain weights aren't traditional on uh, about fourteen and a half aren't traditional is because that the plug they have to make space for that plug uh and give up a little bit of, i'm sorry you're, give good, up, you're good i just, just give up a little video. bit of the uh and marketing people remember an odd number 
Yeah. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it. So what we get? Four, well, you said 14, I think? 14, 14, and, a half. 14, 14 and a half. Yeah. Yep, we'll call it 14 and a quarter, actually. There she blows. So but again, not, not a full kind of mushrooming upset. You know, it kind of stops a little bit. And But I also, again, it's just my theory. I think that the, the, the plug in it, Makes it, makes it at least mechanical at the beginning and then it may turn in, into a little bit more of a hydraulic so it could be all mechanical but, you know I, I don't know so you know the big difference between uh, the ranger products and, and the hornady is um, you know theirs doesn't expand as much but you're getting a little bit more penetration like you said okay. and well, ours you know oh i'm sorry I'm trying to maybe an inch top inch top and a half top. less penetration uh, but they're getting significantly wider. I would, I would call this, you know, if I had to guess, maybe close to point uh, seven, point seven inches. Um, I believe point seven, point seven five, somewhere in that realm. And um, you know, you'll, the T series you'll typically see point nine to over an inch. So, um, you know, you've got to give up something if if you want uh, one thing or the other. And we like to, we we like we feel that we're right in the sweet spot of uh, expansion, expansion and yeah. penetration. So, yeah. Right. As far as the, the testing you guys have done for like the actual um, temporary cavity wounds, mm -hmm. is there compared to these ammos? I mean, like your guys, since you guys expand more mm -hmm. and do more uh, the upset trauma, mm -hmm. you guys have a bigger temporary cavity wound compared to like that critical I, I, would, I would say that I wouldn't say that the, the temporary cavity wound is bigger, but the actual wound itself is obviously the more bigger. trauma to the. Yeah, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. the, the temporary cavity has more to do with. The energy than it does with the actual upset. So okay. think of it as you know, if this is your temporary cavity, that's all energy. But within that temporary cavity is actual wound, actual the permanent cavity wound. You know, yeah. and so yeah, yeah, obviously the bigger the expansion, the bigger that's going to be. Because that critical and, duty, even though like I said, it has a lot of penetration, is it's very small compared to the other. That's very astute observation. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it is. And small. it's very smooth almost. Uh, it, absolutely. Very uniform. Yeah. That's a very astute observation. It's. Um, Okay. Yeah, yeah. That nine was just so. But that, that, but that's your like trade -off. It was made like that almost. That's your trade-off. If all we ever wanted was penetration, then let's just shoot FMJ. We'll just keep poking holes in people. But again, at some point in time, there's a liability issue, the liability control issue. What we want is somewhere. You know, we want that sweet spot. We want you can you can now we could shoot old silver tips here, Winchester silver tips. Guess oh, yeah. what? We're going to get eight nine inches of penetration. That's not adequate, and we know that that doesn't work anymore. Great for home defense, but it's not a good law enforcement round. So you know, what do we want? We want a little bit of everything. We want a, we want enough expansion to con, you know control the distance of travel. We want we want adequate penetration, and we want it to retain weight. So we, we want it, we want the best of all worlds. And, and again, uh, you're seeing the diff you're you're identifying the differences between the products, and, and that's important situation going into home entry uh, all right and, new uh, gelatin block real, real good test for t-shirt material undershirt material two pieces of drywall and again you know as sean mentioned earlier you we're not we're not overly concerned with um you're concerned with that um we're not overly concerned with misses we're, we're not we don't do this test so what happens when we miss somebody in a house uh, that's a training issue that's for range masters and firearms instructors to straighten out with their people. What we are concerned with is, you know, we want to know, as Sean suggested, when we're doing, we're in a house and some, some bad guys using good tactics on us, concealment and cover, we need to know that we can punch through that when he's framing us in the door and this thing's going to work proper, it's going to work terminal, it's going to clear out that material and still work hydraulically. Because we do see, we do shoot at people we can't see and if we, we know that that guy's standing right there, so that's why we shoot it. Misses are training issues, and we're not here to train. So. <laughs> All right, so we'll go back to the top of the order with a nine millimeter. Make sure I got the right material, and we'll start out again with a 147 <coughs> Ranger bonded. 147 Ranger bonded. Go hot again. Eyes and ears. All right, here we go. 147 bonded, nine millimeter, drywall. Line is hot. Going nice, easy shooting gun. There we go. 
Wow. Hey, we blame all misses on the previous Some major penetration right there. Like that. Uh, good depth of penetration here. Um, you know, still good wound cavity. Uh, you can see it stabilizing here and, and nice upset. So, at about 16 and a quarter, 16 and a half. We'll call it 16 and a half. Just over 16 and a quarter. You can see, still nice upset. I actually think I knocked off a piece of lead whenever I was trying to pull it out, unfortunately, but um, still upset. You know, the barrier didn't give it too much trouble. Real close uh, to the same, same penetration as we got out of uh, heavy cloth. So, um, very good result. That's, that's right in the sweet spot of where you want to be. One of the things you may have noticed uh, on our second shot of that round you know, through the harder barrier, it looks like it got deeper penetration. And the reason being is it takes a little bit more time with a tougher barrier. It's got to think about getting that hollow point cleared out. It's struggling to clear it out, so it's going to upset slower and get you deeper penetration. So, um, not uncommon. The harder the barrier, you know, the more difficulty it has clearing out that hollow point, more time it's going to take to upset, the deeper the penetration is going to be. Uh, 16 and a half. We're between a quarter and a half. Um, and a, a good point of note on that is, you know, we skip bare gelatin, but what you could expect from that typically is, you know, bigger, bigger upset, shallower penetration because just because of what George said. You know, it's it's not having to go through anything. It's just the gel. So immediately upon entering that gel, it's got no debris in the hollow point that's clogging it up at all. Just immediately opens up and looks real pretty, which is nice. But again, you know, we're, we want to do the most applicable test to you guys whenever we come out here with, with our limited resources. So, excellent. Thank you. Absolutely. You're hot. Four degrees. Not limited. And that was the critical duty, Hornady? Yeah, okay. Not quite as much penetration. A little Looks bit like shallower. Maybe a 15, maybe? Looks 14 like and a half. And that, that, that tip is right in front of, uh, you can see, that tip is right in front of that projectile. Okay. It's got 14 and a quarter. 14. Which, which 14, one was this? Yeah, 14 and a quarter. Critical duty. Nine. Yeah. So Fourteen and a quarter on the penetration. Yeah, actually. Yeah, about fourteen and a quarter. Just over fourteen. But yeah, you can see the that flex lock tip or what I forget the name of it, but it was right in front. But again, you know, very, very smooth, concentric uh, expansion. Uh, good depth of penetration. Just not as dramatic uh, as an upset or expansion as, as what you get out of the, the range of products. Um, it's just, it's a different way to, to skin a cat. You know, they, they uh, make their hollow points different. They put the, uh, the red, red tip in there. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good result though. RA40B bonded. Firing. Take that. That's a Glock 22 and that's empty and cold. We can go forward. 10 03, 10 03. Extremely consistent upset with what you guys found on that product. I think in the uh, in the uh, heavy cloth. It'll look almost identical. Yep, so really good upset, good depth of penetration. Uh, this is right on point with what, what we design it to do. So we got uh, just about 11 and 3 quarters. 
Yeah, 11 and 3 quarters, 12 inches. What do you call the ball, Sarge? What do you think? 11 and 3 quarters. 11 and 3 quarters. And looks like we've got a very nice upset. Wallboard didn't do much to, to stop this one. But very, very concentric. Nice expansion. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you want. Uses every. <laughs> You can tell the bonding. See how the yeah. the lead is in those notches. Yep. And what you'll see from the T series, which will be next, will be just slightly different from that. So. And afterwards, we're going to put all these uh, projectiles on a board, and uh, we're going to leave it with the agency so that you know new people come in want to see it or or whatever. You'll we'll, we'll, we'll have it. Or if you guys which round is this? I'm sorry. 12 inches, happy customer at the end of the day. We've got 12 inches of penetration, and what we'll see. You do have some fragmentation in there. You know, this is a non bonded projectile it's going, through, going through that barrier. You can see that. But you see here, I mean, this bullet just is doing a lot of damage whenever these, uh, these talons pop out. So every at, at a certain point, these things are having to fold back, and it's like a flower, and it's peeling backwards. So um, this is what you want as it travels through the gel. They're going to bend backwards. As they're bending backwards, uh, they're going to be doing some damage. So the, again, the jacket becoming a part of the uh, trauma-causing process is is what what we'll harp on, uh, and and you'll see that with the 45 T series too. We got some little lead chunks in there. Yep, a little bit. Mag Tech 40. Want to go hot again? Eyes and ears? Mag Tech 40, and we are firing. Looking safe, we'll take it. Line is cold. 988. 988, 988. A little bit shallower penetration than our, uh, than our 40. But it still looks like it, uh, like it got pretty good expansion. So we got uh, about 11 inches, just over 11 or 10 and three quarter. Okay, the horn test is. You guys have some, some sort of rule about blowing your horn? Oh, you do. Yeah, because this is usually hot right here. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, that okay. I sense. got you. I was wondering what everybody was doing. Everybody just go like this right now and point out. <laughs> see what he does. Yeah, so I mean, you know, this is the first time I've shot Mag Tech. Yeah, first time I've ever yep. seen it. And, you know, good, it's good. good upset. And you can tell it's bonded just by looking at the, the core jacket adherence there. Um, not sure of the process, but it, it looks a lot like uh, yes. Ranger bonded, just with a slightly slightly shallower penetration and, and possibly a little bit smaller it's either diameter. Heated or it's either you know electroplated it's really only so way shallower, how was the velocity on that versus uh you got not, that was well, not much different probably within about 10 you know uh, 10 feet per second so it was the design that slowed it down from the yeah i mean and they and they do have a mic we could shoot the same two bullets out of the same guns out of the same box of ammo and one's going to get 11 one's going to get 12. Oh, okay they yeah, do yeah. have kind of a mind of their own you i got know, you a little, a little yeah. bit so what was the penetration on that 11 11. So yeah. still right in the sweet spot for yep. you know you again. Know 180. Got to be 180. Yeah. All we got to do is weigh that. 45. Yeah. 
45T up first. We'll go with 45T up first here. And the line will go hot again. So eyes and ears, 45T. And we are firing. Weapon is safe, clear, and cold. We can go forward. Safe. 1003. We're not getting. We're not getting velocities. Let's try the diffuser. Let's yeah. go forward. No. No. I think it's because the sun. On, it's so. Right yeah. It. it oh, yep. So we got 45T here. But, uh, Good depth of penetration. Got 12 and a quarter there. Yeah, just over 12 and a quarter. Uh, call it 12 and a half. One of the a couple of the talons are poking out above 12 and a quarter. So everything's measured from the very leading edge. Yeah, leading edge yep. of the projectile to the nearest quarter of an inch. Like you can, Up. you can feel yeah. the the, <laughs> the pull on this. Yeah, because yeah. these good penetration. Yep, good penetration. See some little mm -hmm. light cloth in there. Yep. But uh, yeah, real good expansion. It's kind of hard to see with all the gel over it, but you know, very very nice expansion. That's exactly what you want. You know, don't get plugged up by the barrier, and, and you know, control your liability by not getting plugged up, opening up, d doing damage like it's supposed to do. So, yeah, very nice, very nice. We'll uh, measure away this one up. And move on to 45 bonded. Do you have a normal velocity for something like that? That is normal velocity. That one's a normal velocity. No, no, no what I'm saying is, do you have a normal feet per second? Um, oh, what, what the standard on, is? Yeah, what, what your uh, standard on that round yeah, is. Just in a catalog, we had the, we, what is a standard test barrel velocity you okay. know, that, that we engineer the products to. But obviously, change firearms and and but you don't, and, I, I'm and, just saying it for the video. You don't have oh, the, you don't have that off the top of your head. Yeah, um, I'm sorry. Uh, approximately uh, for 45, regular 45 in the neighborhood, like 880, 880s, 890s, 800, yeah. and okay. then plus speed like 990. Okay. I'm not cool. Mistaken. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll verify that in the catalog. I, I haven't that sounds about right. I, I haven't memorized. Oh, I can flip that. Nah, it's alright. We'll, we'll TP 45. Yep. Okay. Plate 21, cold and safe. 952. 952. Big bullets. We like big bullets. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we've got some nice, massive expansion there. Um, you know, a little bit shallower penetration. But it looks like it expanded more, too. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I can see anyway. There's your trade. -off. And we got right about 12 inches. Maybe a little over 12 and a quarter. So, not, you know, still right there in the um, acceptable range. Real good penetration, but this expansion is really what you're going to see the so difference. So you're, you're seeing see the three different calibers, different types of bullets from three different manufacturers. What's the one thing you could say? Everybody's doing this, Everybody, right? Yeah, that's because, yeah. you know, that's what the math tells us it needs to be. Whether it's Magtech, Hornady, or us, you know, that there's your magic area right there. Yep, and, and that's the standard, and that's what we all, you know, try to abide by. And then what we do with the Ranger products is try to enhance that standard. Uh, you know, take it a step further. And, and as you can see, you know, it's, it's really... Uh, nice looking little star there. Absolutely. You know that that looks like something you'd see in a catalog, but yeah, exactly. We're yep. uh, we're firing it live. I get asked that question a lot. You know, people, hey, I saw your catalog. Do the bullets actually look like that? Yep. Yep. We'll come shoot them. Hey, <laughs> got proof here? Uh, no, no, they don't. They can't look like that. They do. Bonded forty-five Ranger. Weapon is safe and clear. We can go forward. Nine four five. Nine four five. Nine forty five on the feet percent. 
Big bullets, big bullets. We like those. A little bit more penetration. Well, which round was that? I'm not good 45 that. bonded. 45 bonded He's, Ranger. Uh, uh, Ranger. Got 13 and a half on that one. 13 and a half. Need the long ones for this. So the bonded went a little further, which is normal. Yep. No. Right on par with with the heavy cloth test, bonded went a little bit further. Still, I mean, very, very good wide upset. Um, you know, very concentric, it, exactly what you want it to do. And like you said, you know, maybe not as wide as the T series, mm -hmm. but where we're, this is really going to help uh, once we get to the auto glass yeah. test, the bonding. Without a doubt. So, uh, good result, very uh, good depth of penetration. And uh, we'll move on to the last but not least critical duty. Critical duty 45. Critical duty 45. Line is hot. Eyes and ears. You don't fire it. Weapon is safe and cold. We can go forward. 953, 953. 953 feet per second. Right over here. Good shot. A, a little less penetration on that one. Yeah, a little bit less on this one. Um, still looks like it got a good, good expansion. And we got right at 12 inches. So we're right there. And upset a little bit wider, it looks like, than last time. Um, flattened out nicely. Good depth of penetration, good expansion. Okay. Didn't didn't get too too plugged up, but you can tell that the that the uh, wall board did have an effect. But that's what you want. So that's the wall board test. Next, we're gonna move on to the auto glass test, which is, is gonna to be tough. You know, it's not the glass, it's not the laminate, the combination of the two that really just mangles bullets. Any bullet on the market is gonna get mangled by it, whether it's bonded or non-bonded. Uh, the only thing that bonded does do is it increases the likelihood of, of the projectile staying together. So, um, you know, none of them are gonna look pretty coming out of here. Oh, that's, yeah. that's for sure. Any of the... Care less what it looks like, as long as it does its job. Exactly, exactly, and that's that's the we like them to look nice for the catalog, but ultimately they've got to get to a certain point and they've got to expand it and retain as much weight as possible. Now, repeat the uh, the offset on that again. So 40, we'll, we'll be shooting at 45, 45 15 degree offset. 15 degree offset, 45 degree slant. been sliding it to the front and yeah. Not fun. <laughs> oh, oh god it's heavy. What's the chunk of that way? Uh, 50. 50 pounds? Wow. 50, 60 pounds. But it's just it's awkward. It's just it's awkward <laughs> to pick up. That's the problem. It's not the way around on you and very awkward to pick. Well, so are humans. So. <laughs> Simulator. Yep. Simulator. Yeah. Simulated. Practice. That's right. Like the greased up deaf gal family guy. Yeah. <laughs> like the greased up deaf gal family guy. <laughs> All right. <coughs> Lay our heavy cloth over it. Light cloth. Light cloth. Light, Light cloth. cloth. Thank you. T shirt and undershirt, right? Yep. Or uh, uh, dress, dress shirt, shirt and undershirt. And undershirt. Yeah. Yep. And there's specific thread weights and all that stuff. We get it specially made for us. So. Yeah. My question is, has anybody ever done actual tests 
on the fabrics to see how much actual difference it actually would make? I mean, or is that just, Good question. they just have to have a standard, basically. I, I think that they just decided on a standard. Uh, and I, just to I, keep I, everything yeah. uniform? I, 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 I don't probably think, wouldn't that, make I don't think they difference. spent a heck of yeah. a lot of time they said, okay, what's the standard t-shirt? <laughs> okay, well, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is that, I, yeah, don't, that's, I, don't, I don't think that's worth worrying about. I just have, yeah. you got to do all the same. The I guess. plain and simple fact of the matter is that, you know, you're going to run into a jillion different types of, of clothing structures out there, housing structures. You know, let's let's narrow this down kind yeah. of thing. I think that's You could spend doing. the rest of your life doing this, I guess. Okay. <clears throat> we are firing. I hope I get a read on Line is cold. Could you repeat the round on that one again? Which nine millimeter bonded, one forty seven Ranger. Okay, thank you. One thousand one feet per second. One thousand one. You got the room over here? Oh, tough, tough, tough test, guys. Takes a lot off the bullet. Um, nothing is going to be pretty. Nothing is going to be up. You know, pretty yeah, upset. Right well, all you want is just lead going. Nine into, inches. Lead going into your target. And again, whether we're talking about bonded or traditionally jacketed bullets, I think what you'll find here is that bullet mass is the most important thing. The more lead you can put on target, the better. You, uh, you know. So, so you this can, is a strong argument for caliber here. Yeah, and uh, you know what you can see here, it, bonded or not, it's that glass is mangling the bullet, and you know, it, because it's bonded, it's staying together. However, it's tearing it apart. I mean, you're not going to get a nice condition concentric upset like you do with these other barriers it's just it's trying to rip that bullet apart so so um, when it hit the glass it took a downward dive very astute observation yep. i was just going to go into that i've you always know. heard that that was okay, the case here, here and that's very good from a tactic standpoint because we would rather the bullet go down high so you right. point of aim yeah, or exactly. if, we're, if we're shooting here because what's your your vision is going to be here yep. so if you're shooting there at minimum you're getting there so that's a good thing from a tactic standpoint because why is it doing, the reason it's doing that is because this is almost like sandpaper. So what's the first part of the bullet that's gonna hit the glass? It's gonna be the bottom of the bullet. That's the first, it grabs it, it literally bites it, and it pulls it down. Conversely speaking, officers shooting out of their windshield, guess what, the opposite Just happens, the opposite. it goes straight up. Yep. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a good observation to make. Um, it's, a very, it's very good from a tactic standpoint. We'd rather have the bullets going down a little bit and then going up a bit. Um, but again, from, from an officer uh, interior shooting out, just um, remember it's just the it, opposite, it is yeah. exactly the opposite. And the, sm the smaller the diameter of the bullet, the less, the deviation, less deviation you get you because get. there is less surface area making that initial grab and bite on the glass. So a 40 is going to go down even more, go up even more than a 9 will. And a 40 so that's, the, opposite, that's yeah. the findings that we have had. Um, the other thing worth noting with regard to this, and, and from a pure physics standpoint, the, the whole thought process of bonded is for the glass test and you know retain weight, more weight, more momentum, more penetration. Still get penetration, yeah. Doesn't always work that way in, in reality. Because what'll happen is that if you what quite often happens, you'll get better penetration out of a non-bonded bullet where that sheds its jacket. And the uh, reason okay. being is okay. it sheds its jacket doesn't have all that extra bearing surface and all these arms and legs and spider webs sticking out Nothing to out slow it, it down. And it, nothing to slow it down, exactly. So it would not be uncommon to have a great big solid hunk of bonded lead that did 10 inches, but a smaller uh, piece of non-bonded just lead that shed its jacket that got 12 inches. And maybe yeah. we'll see that today. It's not always consistent, but Very cool pure physics, you're right. More weight's a good thing doesn't always work out that way if it gets big old long arms and legs on it. Yep. So you know, look for that. You know, and that's some of the argument between bonded versus right. non-bonded. You know, uh, through auto glass, a lot of folks will say, hey, we need a bonded round. We have to have bonded because of auto glass barrier. Well, other agencies that I speak with, they say, you, you know, no, no, if it sheds its jacket, it's secondary wounding, number one, and typically you're still getting the right depth yep. of penetration out of that lead core. You know, 180, bullet failure. Yeah, 180 grain, uh, 40, you know, the lead core is probably going to be 120, 130 grains. That's still going, you know, 10 to 12 inches on target. And then you have a jacket that goes six and turns. I mean, is that a failure or is that, you know, just a secondary wounding? It depends really on the agency's mindset. Uh, some agencies might say it's a failure. Others will say, hey, I'll take it any day. So I must say there's probably been day long discussions and arguments oh, on that, on that doubt. kind of stuff. Without a yeah. doubt. <laughs> End of the day, it's hits that count. Exactly. And again, I think when you, when you do enough of these things, 
the argument becomes, in my opinion, bullet mass. The more bullet mass you, I mean, you could shed a jacket off a of 45. Guess what? There's still 215 grains of lead going in. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. You know, who cares? I mean, you know, yeah. it, there's a strong argument when you do these things for bullet mass over anything else. It really is. Which is interesting as to why everybody's going back to nine millimeters, but. But I you mean, know what? Yeah, bullet. It, it, yeah. You know, enough enough hits on target too. Well, like yeah. I said, I've always argued shot placement versus caliber in general. Absolutely. I mean, the best people, bullet in the world down here is not as good as the worst bullet in the world right here. Yeah. End of story. It, 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 training, 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 it, you know, is very important. Good info, okay. good info. Thank you. So this is, here's our Hornady tap <laughs> Budget, for our Hornady critical duty. Auto glass, line will go hot. Watch our target, watch the glass. We are firing. Lots of glass over here. Weapon is clear and safe. 1009, 1009. 1009 feet per second. Looks like you got about, I don't know, 10, half, 11 there, maybe. Did well. Good depth of penetration. Yeah. 11, 11 and a quarter. Just over 11. And I think what you see, which is pretty common for the, the horny prod, it, it's not real robust up at the, where the, it forms its hollow point. So it loses a lot, but it turns into a nice little slug, you know, right down, I think, to yeah, one. It did lose a lot of the uh, Yeah, it, it's the, not the super, flare. Yeah. right, it's not real robust up in, in that high part because it, it, it makes a lot of accommodation for that, that red tip, mm -hmm. I believe. Yep. So it's not super thick, up, so you tend to lose a lot. But again, it, uh, you know, pretty, you know, thin pill, not a lot of arms and legs on it. You know, so it, go, it got pretty decent penetration. Yep, so not 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 the same expansion as the Ranger, but but decent penetration, uh, good penetration. And um, what was that penetration? Uh, we say 11? 11 and a quarter. Eleven and a quarter. Got to cheat him out of a quarter. <laughs> so if it goes past the eighth, you had to give it the quarter because is that how it works? Pretty much. You yeah, you, next, you you okay. move up to the next quarter. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it was just over it, so yeah, you, you you're got, being generous. You gotta <laughs> give it. You gotta give it. You <laughs> know, it, it was probably tie goes, tie goes to the runner, right? <laughs> Pro, probably closer to eleven, but that's actually right. Bonded forty, RA forty B, hundred eighty grain Ranger bonded. RA forty B, hundred eighty grain bonded. Eyes and ears, always a good thing. Here we go. Forty B. Let's land this. 40B bonded, Ranger. Line will go hot. Stand by. Right, the bottom dot. Yeah, I'm gonna go slide right next to it. Here we go. Weapon is safe. Watch that glass. Line is cold. We can go forward. Nine, eight, nine, nine, eight, nine. That one, that one took a big, big down turn. What did we say? Bigger yeah. caliber, yep. bigger, bigger grab, down right? Return. Sure yep. did, didn't it? You were right on that. Definitely. That's good information there. Sure. can. Oh, there we go. All the shots of the glass ball going back. Yeah, it yep. actually went further and then kind of peeled back a little bit. Yeah. You see that? We'll call it. We'll call it ten. Three quarter, I guess. Up. Well, I'm standing looks like ten and a half, but that's okay. Well, is it over the quarter? That's you guys' ammo, right? I'm, I'm trying to be no, fair. No, it's ten. Yeah, I'll, 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 ten and a half. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And if you look here, you know this is pretty common in gel test. You'll see that it actually went uh, another and then pulled back. You yep, yeah. Yeah. And if you watch that. the slow mo videos yeah. sometimes uh, online, Bullet you'll back. see that it goes and then you know because the, the gel is elastic, the energy, it pushes it back. Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah, it's elastic. It'll it'll come and then kind of punch it back a little bit. So. Joe, you want this? I'm sorry. It's all right. What caliber was that one? A 40, 180. 40 caliber, 180 grain, bonded. What did you say it went about? So next we'll shoot the T-Series. Uh, 10 and a half. 10 and a half. Here's where you, you'll see a little bit of a difference between uh, performance and, it, and it's, you know, it's a bullet design. Uh, but next will be the T-Series, which is non-bonded. We've shot uh, both of our bonded rounds up to this point and we'll get a nice uh, sample of what the difference is in auto glass. We've seen it in, in the lighter barriers and you know the T-Series perform really, really nicely in some of the lighter barriers and uh, this will be a good test for that uh, in an auto glass type. 
It's the 180 grain Ranger, you said? Yep. Or the, okay. Ranger T Series, 180 grain, 40 cal. Line is hot. Eyes and ears, please. Safe. One thousand. One thousand on the money. One thousand on the money. Once again, digging it down. Yep. Oops. Yeah, you can see it better over here. Yep. Yep. There we go. Good nice. expansion. Good penetration. That's that's what you want out of a projectile through auto glass. Call it about nine, mm -hmm. ten, ten. Yeah, we'll give, ten it the, we'll give it the 10. 10, I need a 10. <laughs> and again, obviously, with an auto glass shooting, we're less concerned about the cross body terminal effectiveness because yep. unless the guy can drive like this, I don't, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting drive a with a bladed body, huh? So, as you can see here, you know, the jacket is being pulled away from the lead core yeah, it stayed but together pretty well, though. still yeah. stayed together yeah, you know like george said you know it's about mass and this projectile did a very very good job through this test event it it that is absolutely a success yep. 10 inches good expansion and you didn't have to pay for bonding yep i mean that's the difference it, that's another good point i mean once you move it to a bonded round or some of the more specialty rounds like the hornady round i mean you're going to pay a high yeah. premium for that type yeah. of uh, projectile yeah. but you know the t-series is tried and true it's been around for a long time still our most popular product although there has been a good amount of shift in the market to bonded round go hot again magtech 40 here. bonded round and we are firing Safe. 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 Safe.
two wound channels. Your jacket almost went nearly as far as the core, and I mean the the penetration on this is great. Bullet mass. Yeah. Again. Bullet mass. <clears throat> you know, I'm, that jacket's still gonna be when you. I was about uh, to say the jacket's gonna do some you, damage. When you start, well, when you see some of the lower end high the fragmentation, two to three rounds, the and how they perform, especially through barriers. You almost say to yourself, put the put the M4 down and, and start go back. I swear yeah. to God, now they're a button. Now the I mean, bonded two threes, they, they work great. Don't get me wrong. Well, I'm sure. Yeah, Those yeah. high frag two yeah, threes, though, they don't the, penetrate the for anything. And so I think you're often better to boom, boom, 245. That's two, you know, 460 grains I mean, away. That. That's just that's, the jacket itself, right? That's just yeah. the jacket itself. Yeah. I mean, that's that's doing some cutting trauma right there. What was your total depth of penetration on that one? Uh, 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Big I mean, piece of lead. Too. Big piece of lead, likely, together, yeah. you know, 180 grains maybe, somewhere around there. Civil War mini ball. Exactly. I mean, you've got a lead ball there, and it does its job. Jacket went 11 inches. I would say, you know, that's a very, very good result. Next we'll shoot the 45T plus P. We'll see how it does versus the standard pressure T-series. 230 grain ranger. 45 TP, 230 grain ranger. Line is hot. Five years. <laughs> Weapon is safe. Line is cold. 954, 954. 954. What we got? Whoa, look what happened. We have a nail head, guys. Um, First time I've seen that in glass. Wow. Yeah. I, I've actually seen it uh, with our 45 product in Bonded. Um, again, not a not a bad result. You've got full retained weight on it. You know, didn't give a, a you know, I wouldn't be surprised if our 45 Bonded didn't do a similar thing. Um, but again, you, you've definitely got full retained weight on it. Uh, a little deep in terms of expansion, you know, uh, properties, but. Again, we'll call that a plus 18. And uh, yeah, these these blocks are 18 inches, so if it exits the a, block, that did a real funky turn. It flipped over. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, it, it actually came in, did a kick turn, and flipped over. Yeah. I mean, look now at would that. that have anything to do with the fact you turned the, the gelatin around? Could have gone through another one. Just wound to be channel. fair, could yeah. have, possibly, probably did. Yeah, it also right went through one of the others. Yeah, yeah, it probably did. That's that's the challenge with you know shooting a real estate. You understood, know, limited, understood. Limited that's why I wanted space. to mention it. Just yeah. No, I it mean, could have been interrupted it, by it very, it very well could a former channel. It, it you know might have. I think it might have crossed over right about here. Yeah. But I think it. it was, I think it was, it was relatively independent of itself. But the positive out, outlook is that you're not necessarily worried about. Well, I wouldn't necessarily be worried about the uh, the liability portion of shooting into a vehicle because. It, if they're well, in the vehicle, then they're just. You yeah, know. you got a car, you got the seat, you got everything. The only yeah, thing yeah. you that's think what I'm about saying. So rear seat passenger. The extra penetration could be a good thing at that yeah, point. Yeah, well, yeah, well, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's it's tough enough to get through that barrier to begin with, but you know, you do have to you know be cognizant there are rear seat passengers. You know, the, oh, sucks to be you're, 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 well, yeah, and your liability starts the second you pull the trigger. I mean, so regardless of what the bullet does, kind of. Thing. Yeah, well, that's, that's, <laughs> or not got into. Why with. were they in the car to begin with? <laughs> yeah, that's I unless mean, that's, it's an Uber driver that you're shooting at. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I'm your the Uber guy in the back driver. seat has no clue. Uh, and we are firing. Forty-five bonded. Lots of glass. Nine four six. Nine four six. 946 feet per second. There we go. Went down to the bottom there. It's good penetration on that one. Yep, yep, good penetration. Uh, pretty much nail headed too, though, I think. Yep. It just took a turn and, and maybe that maybe that other one did go through, sneak through another channel yep. and yeah. it weakened it. Because they're going to look about identical. You know, yeah. And about the same velocity. I'm not a Blissix guy, but common sense would say No, I mean, it, it probably did. It had I, an easier path yeah. for some, yeah. so, some yeah. somehow. Well, that 13 and 3 quarters. Because, I mean, it ain't a heck of a lot different than, mm -hmm. than what we just did. Okay. 
13, three quarter. It's a yeah, heavy, slow, big bolt. Like it's not a, you know, not uncommon in glass, and it would it would possibly nail heads like that. Which is again, well, it saying, locks the jacket that, into place. By saying nail head, I just want to confirm oh. myself. It's, it's, yeah, it's going it, in on itself as opposed to expanding. Correct, it. closing on itself kind of thing. Talking about, and it's worth grabbing one of these, and and that's why we we don't uh, we really don't shoot the steel test. Good expansion. Look that's at the steel there. test and all the products we make. Boom, boom, boom. That is a nail head right there. It just kind of collapses in on itself. And what you'll find quite often is that in in 45, it'll almost give you that same effect. Big on auto glass. Big, heavy, slow bolt. But you look at it. No matter what caliber, no matter what type, it pretty. These are rifle rounds, but. It pretty much collapses in us, and that's what we call a nail hit. Okay. Good expansion. Good, good information right here. Hornady Critical Duty 45. Last shot. All right, here we go. Mine is hot. Eyes and ears, watch the glass. Weapon is safe and clear and cold. We can go forward. 944, 944. 944. Again, it loses that top. You know, that, that yeah. it, relatively weak uh, hollow point. Took a trajectory straight down. Oh, God. Yeah. It just turns into a little slug. Yeah, so what, you know, same thing with the 9mm. What you're seeing in through the auto glass barrier, good penetration out of this one. Uh, but just like the 9mm, you know, the whole front of the projectile is gone. Uh, it just shears off. Um, it's got to be a little bit, you know, you can actually see the front of the projectile right here. Oh, uh, yeah. It's sheared off. Um, and, and, and the reason for that what is... What round was that? What brand? That was, that was the Hornet 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 Duty. Hornet 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 just over 14 and a quarter. But yeah, what you'll see here, you know, it's the base of the bolt. Um, and the jacket stays on it, but it just, like you said, but, it shears the top off. But the, but the top's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So giving up some expansion at the, you know, at the benefit of penetration, really, is, yeah. is what it is. You know, if the front of that shears off, then it makes it smoother, allows it to go deeper. And that's all she wrote for handgun rounds, right? Oh, for handgun. Now, keep wearing that. Line is hot. Okay, just where we want to be. Stand by going forward. Coming back. Toe to heel, toe to heel. Toe, do you like that, huh? <laughs> Almost tripped. All right, here we go. Okay, my weapon is safe and clear. Put it on safe and we're dynamite. 2873. 2873 okay. feet per second. About this nine, is, eight, as I said, half, this nine. is bottom end of the, of the continuum, value of one. It's traditional high fragmentation type of round. Now, if you never had to shoot through a barrier, this would be dynamite. That, that's going to be, a, I believe it's a 55 tap. So, um, absolute. Big kinetic one. energy, permanent wound trauma. Okay, a teardrop of destruction when you get right down to it. So we try to measure this in a couple ways. We try to measure the total depth of penetration, then we try to give you an estimate on what that that you know what the cavity is right there. So we got eight and three quarters of penetration, mm -hmm. and then you know the wound cavity. We take it, you know, just about, a guesstimate, about four inches maybe wide and. And where it starts, where it starts to retract is where we stop it. So, you know, it's it's from maybe five and a half, five and a half, yeah, about five and a half inches. Okay. 
and there isn't going to be a heck of a lot left. But you know the the depth of penetration under nine inches of penetration, mm. you know that kind of dispels not bad that actually. feeling that hey you know we're going into a uh, you know housing environment we can't shoot a rifle because it's going to over penetrate. I mean this type of round <laughs> penetrating yeah. much less. A miss is a miss. Hand regardless but as long as you're hitting the target you're right. better off with these rounds in terms of over penetration and depending Quite. on the application you know you may want a high frag round like this right. uh, but if you want a more general purpose round uh, there, there are more uh, overall better performers in the middle of the spectrum we'll get the turn rifle round because like you said right. for liability purposes yeah it's just, it's made just a big explosion. old mess didn't it yep. the, the, but again you'll see the shortcomings on that end of the spectrum when we start punching through barriers it's going to take an awful lot mm -hmm. so that is so again there's no one magic bullet out there but you'll 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 see this representation that I'm talking about so that is how we do it right there but if you never had to punch through a barrier then that's a dynamite round for you because we make one just like it, called ballistic silver tip. Okay. You know, and it's and it performs identically. Just like. Alright. 55 grain boat tail hollow point. What brand was this? ER5. Weapon is safe and clear. Putting it on safe, we can go forward. And that was what brand again? Federal? Uh, that's federal. federal, okay. 3144. Not a heck of a lot different. It's a big this is probably a match bullet. You know, um, they're not really made for terminal performance, they're made for accuracy. Um, so it's, it's not going to be a real robust type of bullet that's going to hold together. So similar to what you're going to find with ballistic solar tip. Actually, I expected it to hold together a little bit better than it did. It's almost identical to that uh, ballistic the tip. Tap stuff, yep. yeah. A little bit less penetration, guys. We've got about seven and a quarter. But bear in mind that is a that is a bullet that is really made for accuracy. Now, doesn't change the fact that it's 55 grains traveling at 3,000 feet per second is going to leave a mark. Are you uh, did you get a uh, did you get a speed on that? Mm -hmm. I, I forgot. Yep. 3144. 3144. Okay, so it's a little faster. Yeah. Snap. Yeah. So between seven and eight inches, you know, real small uh, leading projectile here. You had some fragmentation. Um, again, you know, if if you're just encountering, you know, light lightly clothed people, then you know, just like the Hornady, very good round. But what do you do in law enforcement? Yeah, Surround there, yourselves with barriers. You have vehicles. You have housing. You have all these different other type of obstacles. Possible, you know, uh, heavier yeah, clothing. You know, leather jackets, different things, uh, car doors. Uh, you want to know that if you fire, uh, if you have a suspect that's smart and takes some cover, that you know your round is going to be able to do what it's supposed to do so once we get to the tougher test that's where you really see a difference between the construction and and it's not that rounds like this one or the previous one it fail it's just that they're designed differently there there's different uh things in mind you know that was meant to totally different application very, a yep. much more vast array of performance than compared to pistol rounds you can really change yep. your game with rifle. But it goes back to your analogy between the Porsche and the truck and right. the whatever. So yeah, it's a you, different you know, job, different man. Uh, and and there, yeah. there's a bigger variety of choices with rifle. It real change the game. Okay, so now we're going to step up and we're going to and we're, we're going to look at a round that's a, made for a little bit more terminal performance with that power point. Again, I like to call it a, a, so, a 55 soft point on steroids. It's a soft pointed bullet got a nice thick cantaloupe to it but it's also a longer bullet because it's heavier um, a little bit more robust jacket so it, it kind of gives you all the benefits of a soft pointed bullet but a little bit more robust really really good economical choice for a patrol rifle around does everything very very well and it's not real expensive you can actually train with the dog on and again this was the power point power point power 64, point, grand. 64 yeah, grand. that's why we branded it our patrol rifle round because of its it, it, it's common you know right. atlanta pd they use it a lot of big agencies use it it's economical Bo border patrol for years used really? it okay. just does everything really well we've been making it since christ was a corporal so <laughs> all right here we go power point 64. line is hot we are firing my weapon is safe safety is on we can go for it. Two seven two one. Two seven Heavier two round, one. Heavier round, a little bit slower. There you go. Here's your twenty five hundred feet per second, twenty five auto. Much, much, much more retained weight. Much That's more. Retained. Over ten inches there, at least. Yep. And here's the thing. 
every one of these rounds, you still got all that energy trapped in there. So you're not you're not losing the benefit of the energy. It's just what the bullet's gonna do when it's in there. You got all that energy caught in that block. But it just moves up inches. that continuum. Eleven inches. That is a eleven on the money. That is a dynamite, dynamite choice for just a multi-purpose. Throw it in front of anything. It's even gonna do pretty good in auto glass. A couple shots in auto glass. You can see you get that nice mushrooming effect yeah, that you a lot see. More bullet weight there. Yeah, a lot more bullet weight. You know, this is probably gonna be in the 60 plus range in, in, in terms of retained weight. Likely close to 100% retained weight. Nice mushrooming. Um, you know, it's a, it's a totally different design as the previous ones at, at a, you know, a very economical cost. It, it's probably gonna save you money. So, um, very, very good round. And you're not losing anything like George said, in terms of the kinetic energy. I mean, not only are you still getting that, you know, kinetic energy shock wave, that, that wound channel, but you're also getting a projectile that's deeper in the body. So I it's, actually, I like that. it's a win-win. It's, it's a dynamite. Man. It really is. All right, now, top of the food chain, bonded projectile. If you got to punch through something strong, that bonded is made to stay together. And this is going to get 16, 17, 18 inches of penetration. And this round was developed uh, in, in close tandem with uh, uh, the FBI uh, for solicitation. Uh, the requirement was if you've got guys who are shooting shorties, you know, 10 and a half inches all the way up to uh, 20 inch barrels, this round was designed to be terminally effective, you know, meaning it would still upset, still mushroom out, out to 100 yards out of various barrel lengths. So you can be confident with this round, not only is it a barrier blind round, it's bonded like our Ranger bonded handgun rounds. But also, it's uh, it's highly effective through any barrel length you're gonna. True, you true. Want. Five, five, six pressure as well. Uh, so really good for in supporting and velocities. Bullet, and bullet and weight. I'm sorry again. Looks, 64, 64, just like the, just like the power point. Right. Okay, here we go. Bonded 64. We're gonna get 16 to 18 inches of penetration. Easy. Line is gonna go hot again. We are on fire. Bonded 64 grain. Is safe. Quick to say we can go forward. Two five eight three. Twenty five eighty three feet per second. Oh yeah. Look at that. Every time, guys. It is absolute top of the food chain animal. Uh, that was the previous FBI contract uh, product. We have renewed for another five year FBI contract with that item. Uh, it is a dual award, in all fairness, both the federal TRU round as well as our 64 bonded are both uh, 15. Uh, FBI contract rounds and have been for the last five years. Nice mushroom on the head there. Yeah, it's just, yep. it's just meant, I mean, it's robust. And you still see the wound cavity here, you're still getting a giant wound cavity. You're still yes, doing a lot of damage. Long, yeah, very long. But what you're getting out of this one is that mushrooming. You're still getting a projectile, 64 grain projectile on target that's crushing whatever's in front of it. So while, while a high fragmentation round's great, you know, again, for those, uh, uh, for the shallow shock trauma that it provides, this one does that, but it also gets you a heavy projectile on target, you know, going 15 inches. So it's um, very, very purposefully built round. Okay. That hard barrier start taking off some of these higher fragmentation type of rounds. Start losing a little bit of itself. Uh, 100 to the top, 55 grain. Right. Through, Line's gonna go hot. Through sheet rot. Two layers. Drywall, drawn to the tap. Line is hot. Weapon is safe. We can go forward. 2824. 2824. 2824. Fair amount of energy still left in this thing, so I think you got you know still got a satisfied customer, but not much left. You're just not seeing yes. anything left in terms of retained weight. I mean, there. I don't even know if we can really. I don't think it's measurable. Yeah, I don't think it's measurable uh, in terms of weight. We might be able to pull something out of there. Um, or the distance we're talking yeah. here. Yeah. Right here, it looks like there's the a little little sliver of uh, got about seven inches of penetration. We got a little sliver of, that we'll pull off for the weight. <laughs> Not much left. I don't even know if I can. No, 
Yeah, guys, there's a reason why I didn't go to medical school. I wasn't good at it. You didn't play operation as a kid? I'm trying to dig out to see if there's anything. Just imagine a doctor trying to get all that. Yeah, I mean, what we'll, what we'll do, we can grab a couple of fragments, but we'll just put fragments down um, for the for the retained weight. You know, you can see heavy, heavy fragmentation in here, which is doing damage, but, you know, again, really need that depth of penetration to be a little bit further. And this was one of the tap? Yes. Just so fragments for weight basically, just no, not much left. Yeah. Yeah, there's not much. Line is hot. Federal 55, boat tail, hollow point. And we are firing. Weapon is safe, on safe, we can go forward. 3108. Took the shirt in the hole with it. Yeah. Tucked it in. That's right. Fragments left on that one too. Not same thing. But yep. it's yeah. still significant wound. Oh yeah. Still, there's still plenty of energy going there. So, got a little bit deeper penetration. Seven inches. About seven, about seven. We're gonna go for a demo record here. We're gonna try to get four shots on, uh, eight shots on a block. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I want to. I want. I'd like to save that one green block for, for the there. slug. Yep. We're gonna need everything. For glass. So this is all we got. You know, that's what we got on seven inches. Um, we'll pull a couple pieces. Eyes and ears. PowerPoint 64. PowerPoint 64 grain Winchester. Twenty-seven, twenty-one. Now this is the one you guys call your patrol rifle round that we were talking about earlier. Multi-perfect, gorgeous shot of it over here. This is exactly what we're talking about. It's about 10, 11 inches maybe. Right. Yep. Good, Big, good mushroom. Big bullet weight mushroom. Yep. All right. I can't wait for Ron to see this. Might be changing the patrol rifle rounds. Yeah, we got just over 10, 10 and a quarter inches, so we're about 10 and a half. 10 and a half, okay. And a little bit of expansion there, too. You know, nice concentric projectile there, concentric upset. Looks real similar to what we saw out of the heavy pot test. Yep. Very, just very versatile. More around. Just more robust. Designed for terminal performance. We are going to land eight shots on. This is a record. This is. <laughs> now, if we don't zip this one through another wound <laughs> channel, it's going to go hot again. Eyes and ears. Winchester bonded 64 grain. And we are two, two, three. firing. And it is safe. We can move forward. 2688. 2688 feet per second. Did we stop it? I think we did. Somewhere in there. Sure did. I'm getting good at this. Look at that. <laughs> Going into penetration. Every time, guys. No matter what you throw in front of it, 16 inches of penetration. Yep. It's just, it's really, really consistent. Very consistent, good. Fifteen and a half. What'd you say? Fifteen and a half. Yep. You know, again, right in the sweet spot there, and you know, very, very wide. Got really good. That's going to be probably three times its original diameter. And near, if not 100% oh, yeah. retained weight. I mean, that is uh, a very good result. And that's what that round was designed to do to defeat bears. 
Corn did the tap in my mag there first. Corn did the tap. Eyes and ears. Line will go hot. 55 green. Watch the glass. We are firing. Weapon is safe and clear. We can go forward. 2867. 2867. 2867. Wow. Okay, there's there's your problem. We've got a little bit funky gel on that. You can side, see so. it on this. You can see right here. At Takes first, I thought that was the shot, but then I realized, no, no, no. It, then I realized no. it was it's the a little gel. crystallization it's from the mold. But you can see where you've lost a lot. Of it. I mean, you've lost a lot of the terminal terminal performance of that round. Um, cause to shoot them once. You got cause to shoot them twice. Probably going to still have an effective round. Is it optimal? Probably not. You, you know. Got that. Five max. max, you're right. We'll call it five, yeah. but I'll call that five by about two and a quarter. So yeah. we, we you, you do lose a lot off that. What round. What, what round was that again? That's the tap, 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 grain. High fragmentation, 55 grain. Yep. So looks like we might be able to recover a little sliver of lead out of here to just display on the board. Yeah. Alright, corner right. the tap, red tip, there. 55 grain. NR, not recovered. We're not recovered. Well, okay. Probably the same story as Holler with point. the Boat Tail Hollow Point, 55. And that is your... That's that one. What was that one called on the That end? is the bonded, the, the bonded round. Bonded round. Yep. That's the one I always goes for. So I just want to get a close up oh, of okay. the bullets themselves. I forgot. It's all right. Oh, I forgot to do it. So here's your 55 boat tail hollow truck. Probably going to get a similar performance. We'll lose a little bit on it. Line will go hot. Eyes and ears. 55 boat tail hollow point. Weapon is safe and clear. We can go forward. Three, two, one, two. Ooh, that was fast. Yep. Thirty-two, twelve. Big. Again, I think if you shoot twice, I think you're a happy customer. But you definitely see how the other ones perform better. The that wound Bobby. cavity looks bigger. Yeah, a little bit know, more. Little it's bit probably bigger. got a little bit more splay that, from that the glass. Speed, the speed also, I think. Yeah. Might do oh yeah, the, you know, more energy. That's for sure. It's like the furthest part. I'm seeing is that chunk right there, and that's four inches. This is the only substantial thing we'll be able to pull out of it. There's one right below it that was a little further, but it's, I mean, not much further. It, no, nah, maybe it was just the way the gelatin looked. Yeah, and I, I saw that, but it kind of it kind of went like, like the handgun hand round. Back, yeah. yeah, it kind of came in and went back out, so. For that one, you know, maybe four and a quarter. We can call it four to four and a quarter. Although we're not going to be able to pull any mass or weight measurements yeah, off I that. Think there ain't much left. Yeah, that's just a soft point, years. sixty-four grain Winchester power point. Weapon is going to be safe. We can go forward. Two six nine three. Twenty-six ninety-three. Now, it took a lot, a lot off that one too. Wait a minute, what did I do here? No, well, there it is. Unfortunately, we did get, it's almost like that bullet went up. It, it, we, def we definitely got into the other room, Chad. Yeah. You know what? Well, let's flip it. Let's give it an honest chance here. Let's flip that over like so. Yummy. Right. <laughs> yeah, that one. Wait. This stuff makes great hog bait. <laughs> PowerPoint. All right, that was a redo on the 64 grain soft tip PowerPoint Winchester. 2635. Very consistent velocities, too. Up, it seems like. But still beats the yeah. bullet up, but you got you got more, more, it's more robust. It really is. Definitely got more penetration than the other two. Seven and three quarter. Seven and three quarter? Yep. I feel bad 
except for the lady I got to sit next to on the plane to Philadelphia. She's gonna smell me. Oh, you don't get a chance to shower, huh? <laughs> no. I may, I may spruce up in the American Airlines. There you go. School. There you go. <laughs> Y'all already checked out? Pardon me? Oh yeah, yeah. There we go. I can use the. Uh... Oh no, I, I'm 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 kidding. I'm I'm, I'm getting. Because we got a yeah, you full, do. fully functional bathroom oh, in there, oh, shower yeah. and everything. Yeah. I appreciate it. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll take a stab at that. Or else I'll get my own seat away from everybody. <laughs> well, they'll make you buy another one. Oh, that's right. I'm, I'm in, I forgot. I'm in first class. I forgot. What? Yeah, nice. Fly like I do. Big there you go. Fly. Yeah, that's right. And you're yeah. making him. And you're Stinky making him sit in economy. Yeah. Still had some. <laughs> some definitely some more bullet weight there. Yep. Still had some fragmentation. Oh, we're gonna just, we're gonna take I this one as the leading projectile. We'll just put these on the board. This is the one we'll weigh and measure. So. Alright, bonded 64. Okay, line is hot. Eyes and ears. Weapon is safe. Oh, whoop, I dropped the magazine. My apologies. Weapon is safe. 2679 on the uh, velocity. There she is. 26.79. Right there, guys. Wow. Every time. You see that in there? Let's flip this. Let's flip that boy. Just tip it up a little bit here, Sean. Oh, that's not a real good shot either. There it is right there. Big, long, 14 and 3 quarters, guys. Mm. That's what we pull out of there. Boom. Every time, guys. Yep. Basically, it will tear it up right to where the the cantaloupe is, but that cantaloupe basically locks in place so you, every time. Everything you shoot it through 16 inches of penetration. I mean, you're looking at you know 50 or so grains on I'd target that, at 15 inches. I'd give yeah. that a good two and a half by six inch cavity too. That's I mean that's why you make a bonded bullet right there. Yep. Heck yeah. That's pretty neat. You know, that round was purposely built for law enforcement for barrier penetration. So it's um, it's a very, very high performance round. All righty. We got one clean block left. Huh? That is scored both inside the cavity as well as the outside of the projectile itself. And what this, what this round does, it actually weakens the slug so that when it hits terminally, it'll actually break up into three equal pieces, giving you a couple different aspects. Number one, it's gonna give you three different wound channels. Number two, it's gonna limit penetration because it dispenses the energy so quickly. Unlike a lot of regular uh, foster slugs or, or, or slugs out on the marketplace, the real fear of over penetration. This you will not get that with. Um, the other thing that's interesting about this product is that when you when you fire it through a soft barrier like you know a bear gel or like a cloth or even a drywall it'll 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 get you that breakup every time it's almost like it's functioning like buckshot but when you have to fire through a, a heavier barrier like wood or steel or auto glass it'll quite often you know uh, stay slug or stay ballistic for it so it's almost like it's reading the target which is really what you want to do you want it to be a slug on a hard bird but you want it to limit penetration and function like a buckshot in, in the uh, in the soft barriers. The the real interesting thing about it is the the people that we showed it to is the concept of going to one round. For a lot of agencies that are shooting both buck and slug, you know that's a thinking man's weapon system. And you know gauging of distance makes it very difficult. Should I be switching to slug? Should I stay with buckshot? Do we have to worry about over patterning? This is one round. Simplifies the weapon system. Works like a works like buckshot when it needs to work like buckshot. Works like slug when it needs to work like slug. And you don't have to think about it. You just go to work and you shoot. So that's a real benefit. And the people that have, we've shown this to and they've adopted this, they've bought into that concept and they like it because again, just you know, if you're worried about patterning. You know, you you know, when do you got to worry about? You ultimately you're gonna have to worry about buckshot patterning. And, and, and liability flyer. issues and a flyer. flyer that's right regardless of you know you know at some point in time and the gauging of distances under under attack forget it goes out the window 75 yards looks like 15 so how can you make a conscious decision under fire you know and, and make the right decision it's very challenging simplify the weapon system one round keep it simple go to work and the, name, the name of it again is it is the segmenting slug segmenting slug full Wind power testing. so it works well in a 14 inch gun as well as an 18 inch gun um, 
It is not a low recoil because we wanted to make sure that it would function like that in both of the, the short barrel length guns that are so common in the marketplace. Yeah, yeah. So this sucker is hot. Very hot. All right. We like hot guns. It's 870. Yep. So we're going to load and fire one round. One round. It's going to do the gel dance in a big way. So, all right. Segmenting slug. One are we, round. Are we going to get hit gel. with the uh, gel back here or not? Pardon me? Are we going to get hit with gel back here? Oh, no, no. No, okay. no, no. It, okay. it, it's Just check it. Just we'll check. Just get up good, do. good answer. Here we go. <laughs> good question. One round and firing. Yeah. And yep. she, there she goes. That's what he meant by the gel dance. Did <laughs> the gel dance. That's why I don't. That's why I like shotgun. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you. Okay. As you can see, a full-powered slug round, 12 inches of penetration. We lost nice. all that energy in there, but we've also recovered. Got several little pieces, yeah. That's Oh, you're showing them the... Yep. All right. Now, what is that again? That's just what the round looks like. Um, oh, okay. Prior to firing. Yeah, we just got to find it. It's a little cloudy here. Yeah. I dropped it now. It's all good. That's the basics. So we got uh, one projectile, one, two, and number three's got to be down there somewhere. Oh, sure. I think it's right. You got so it. That's wadding. So I got one right here at, we'll just do this one first since it's the most visible. Uh, we've got about eight and a half inches directly through the top. You see that one? Dang it. Uh, we'll do all three, eight and a half for number one. I can't. Here, go for it. There we go. Got it. There's one. And this one went a little bit further. There's my roof over there. There we go. Might be good if we just shot it, uh, split it in half, Sean. Block. Yeah? Yeah, just I just chop it in half. One right there. Really into it. Well we got yummy. I used to work in the cheese shop. <laughs> God, you guys will be glad when I leave. <laughs> no, I'm all, all right, about, I'm all about <laughs> jokes. I'm all about so jokes. There's one right there. So we got what is that on penetration? Point of it being, whole power and a half. slug, 12 inches of penetration, dumping all of its energy, no liability mm. on the back end. Heck yeah. Does exactly what it says, you know, breaking the three 11 and a half pieces. inches right there. And then this one's right here, so. Who's that? Nine and a half. Yeah, nine and three quarters. Oh, that's oh, wide. wide. I don't know where the other one went. It's in there somewhere. It might have come out on the dance. It could, it could have come out. I don't yeah. know. But here, you know, here's the other one. Where did it go? Would have had to go to the bottom. Maybe it, it came out of the. Maybe it came out of the. <laughs> no, it was there. I don't know. It's not in here. Well, it must have come out. Uh, look at this wound channel. Yeah. This is the. Absolutely. You know, nobody's getting us. Devastating. That, guys. Devastating. Sorry. Yeah, but it must have split through the bottom of, you know, come at the bottom of it. But again, you know. Yeah, sometimes. And, and squeezed out the back somewhere. But, you know, again, not, uh, not like any other slug round you're going to find out there. And if we shot it through auto glass, it would be, you know, it would stay, it would stay almost ballistic, just like in this gun, just like in the to be switching between all these different types of things simplifies ordering from that standpoint and it's right the price is right in line with with any other premier you know premium duty shotgun ammunition bath time right <laughs> like that. after all those pig gel find it <laughs> 